mock size extensions. This is the mock shad 120. So let's make our first little cast out here. It'll probably be in two inches of water or I won't see them at all. They'll be way out there. No way, no way on the swim bait. Holy cow, holy cow. Over the last decade, I've caught fish in every corner of North America, from California to Mexico, Florida to New York, and all the way up to Canada, documenting it all on video for you guys. Yes, I got it! But as a video creator and instructor, I have generally left out one of the most important and the largest demographics in the world of fishing, and that is the bank beater, the pond prowler, the shore master. Yeah! In this series, I'm making it my goal to fish more bodies of water than I ever have before, but this time from the bank. My name's Tyler, and this is 100 Ponds. Well, what's going on folks, and welcome back to uh, 100 Ponds, where my goal is to catch bass in 100 different ponds, but you've already seen that, because I have an intro. So forget the second intro, let's go to pond number 65. Well, in the time between Pond 64 and now Pond 65, a lot has changed. One, my voice doesn't sound good because I was at Santee Cooper for the Bass Pro Tour event. The house we were staying in had mold, and so I'm still recovering from mold, allergies, whatever it is. Excuse the raspy voice. And two, I was gone for a week at max, and it went from being like late winter, deciding what jacket I wanna wear to film, and now it's like summertime. I'm in shorts and a sun shirt, and it's 90 degrees outside. In February, it's 900 ponds has kind of gone from being late winter to now full-blown pre-spawn. I've even heard of bass on beds right now. We might see one, who knows? But whether or not we actually see one, the fish should be in a lot better biting mood. So I've got two reaction baits, a spinner bait and a hybrid hunter. Hopefully catch them on this. And after some warm days, let me test the water. It is significantly warmer. I mean, it is springtime conditions. Hopefully the bass are up shallow. Hopefully we catch one. And one thing you'll definitely notice in this video is that I am mic'd up and I don't always like to be mic'd up, but it is crazy windy. I mean, like we have some kind of crazy front blowing in. I think because it's 90 and it's February, we've got a cold front coming. So that's why I'm, I've got out here today. I believe Bass Forecast had today as a high rating. the 5.8 today, so not fantastic, but better than it has been. And because of the wind, that is why I'm choosing to throw two reaction baits. I've read the comments. I know y'all want me to slow down and fish stuff. That's not total reaction, but especially in today's conditions, not only do I want to catch them on reaction baits, I feel like these lures are actually my best shot at catching fish and hopefully they're active because of the wind. Now the water clarity in this pond is actually pretty dang good, but the vegetation does not look that good. Let me try to see if I can snag this stuff for y'all. Ew, yuck. It's definitely some kind of a snot grass, but it has some filaments to it. So it's not total snot grass, but it's not total good grass either. So the fish could be relating to the edge of it just because it's the only structure in here besides the fountain in the middle, but they're probably gonna be sitting on that drop off just like they were in pond 64. But again, we've had some crazy warm weather with today being 90 plus degrees. So I feel like these fish should be, if they're playing by the book here, they should be a little more active. Now, one thing that is true about its sister pond over there is that you can catch fish anywhere, but there's like one cast that's way better than any other cast. So I'm assuming this could have a very similar story where I kind of go around the whole pond and maybe get a bite here or there, but I, I find one spot that the fish love to sit on. So I'm gonna really fish thoroughly here. Again, it's not a huge pond. I can afford to go slower while going fast and not just totally cover water. If this was like post-spawn or summer, Meow. Super fast lap around the whole thing, top water, vibrating jig, swim bait, whatever, and I'm on to the next one. This time of the year, I'll be a little slower. I ain't catching diddly. Let's try burning it back in. How about that? This thing bombs, good grief. It's a pre-spawn, please. You're supposed to bite. Oh, I feel good about this cast here. I don't know why. Kind of one of the only two points in this whole place. Good grief. I just, I just do the crankbait like 70 yards. Gosh, there's one. Holy cow. As I stinking burned it to get it down in the water column. Whoa, maybe that's how these fish want it. And it's a nice one. Come on, buddy. Absolutely train wreck this thing. My gosh, 
That was awesome. That was awesome. Come on now. Come on now. Hope y'all were able to see that retrieve. Yes. Gosh. <laughs> Straight up got the hybrid hunter to the face. Hopefully it focuses. There we go. Look at that. Like many pre-spawn bass around the country, he's got a little bit of lipstick on him. And while it's not a giant, it is a gorgeous, I mean like really beautiful specimen of a bass. Hit this thing like a train. See you, buddy. That was awesome. If we were closer to the truck, I would enter him into my Fishing Chaos monthly tournament. But you know what? I'm not going to win nothing with a fish of that size anyways. But that was crazy. I literally like burned it to get it down, paused it, and the fish attacked it. So I'm probably going to do a little more stop and go retrieve because it's totally possible that fish needed the fast movement of the crankbait to, uh, to strike. And there was no question that he wanted to eat it. He had both hooks in his face. That was cool. Now, one thing you've got to be careful about when you have a bite like that is you might get to thinking every fish needs that kind of a retrieve to, uh, to strike and eat on this specific day, and that might not totally be the case. So I'm still going to play around with retrieves, start slow versus starting fast, and see which one ends up getting more bites. Could be a fluke, could be the beginning of a pattern that I just discovered. Oh my gosh, oh, there's one. There's one. Same exact spot on the paws. I think we figured him out, folks. Oh, and he's peeing. That is a male bass getting ready to spawn. He doesn't have a bladder problem, he just wants to mate. And so one of two things is true. One, we've discovered the pattern, or two, we've discovered, as I talked about a second ago, the one cast in this area, because I've caught both fish right here. So I'm gonna make a few more casts to this area. I might catch one, might not. Either way, glad to have two fish in a pre-spawn day, baby. Yes! Gets me jacked up. Gets me mock jacked up. All right, no bones. Keep on moving. Thought I would show you guys what the process looks like of moving from spot to spot with all this junk. There's the camera. Extend the tripod with my legs. Looks like we're still lined up. Put my other rod right up against the camera. Almost hook myself on my treble hook. Line myself up. Oh, realize that I'm not good. And there, that's all the stuff that I would normally cut out, but uh, Merry Christmas. I'm just excited that I caught some bass and didn't have to shake the dang minnow. I'm sick of the minnow. It catches giants, but I'm sick of the minnow. Oh, right, a bit of backlash. You know what? I'm going to walk out my backlash. Do a little long lining action. There we go. Should catch one there. Right in the depth zone, I've been getting the bites. I don't know exactly how deep that's been, but I kind of know how far off the bank it is. Ooh, I see bait fish. That is the first sign of any kind of forage species I've seen in this pond. Maybe a bluegill or two, but I just saw a school of bait fish sitting right here. So actually, I'm gonna back off a little bit because even this time of year, in ponds especially, I've seen it, fish can push bait fish up really, really shallow. Like shallower than you'd think they would in the early spring. And sometimes they're sitting just on the outside. But I think it's getting shallower, honestly. Like the bank here is sloping off, not quite as, as steep. As I talked about, it, that was a point. Oh my goodness. The only real piece of, uh, underwater contours in this whole thing the fish were sitting on. So how's that for pattern ability? As I burned it past a patch of grass, I got burned myself. Come on now. What the heck? That was a gajillion percent of bass. Come on now. Come back for it. What are you doing? There he is. There he is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, yo. Told y'all. Bring it in here. Bring it in. Yes, sir. We got ourselves fish number three and as you can tell I'm having some dang fun if you're not subscribed you're missing out and as I get to this corner here I'm seeing that it is not only shallow up here but it's also really dirty water because the wind has been slapping against the rock wall all this sand here these rocks all the sediment has kind of come off the bottom so I'm not saying I can't catch one here in the corner but I feel like I'm less likely to So to finish out this pond, I decided to take my stuff and go all the way around the pond and actually fish my non-dominant way. I like setting the hook this way, but I'm gonna fish with the rod tip this way for the last few casts down this bank here. It is the windiest bank, which in theory, bass fishing theory, it should mean there's the most bass on this bank, there's the most bait on this bank. Uh, wind is your friend, especially in the spring, summer, and fall. I say spring, if you're bed fishing, it's never your friend. But just generally in bass fishing, warmer water, wind is your friend, and so I'm hoping there's a few more fish sitting on this bank on the drop off as they've been the whole pond so far. I do have a channel, yes. Just met a subscriber named Ryder who lives in the neighborhood and it's 
it's kind of mind-blowing to me, although I say mind-blowing, it actually kind of makes total sense, that kids nowadays see a camera and immediately their first response is like, do you have a YouTube channel? I think a decade ago, it's like, what are you filming for? And now there's not even a question, it's for YouTube. Give it like four years, the kids are gonna be like, you got a TikTok? Which by the way, I do, follow me there. And man, I can really tell the wind has just trashed this bank. Oh my, as I say that, a fish comes up and sharkitos this thing. Wow, that was crazy. About a half pounder came out of the water for it. Well, I was in the midst of saying that uh, the wind has trashed this, so there's probably not any bass, but I was wrong, as usual. Well, folks, that probably about does it for today. Could I slow down and probably pick off a few more? Yes, I could, but I'm honestly happy with the amount of bites I got. And I'm even more happy that pre-spawn is here in Texas. I am pumped. We're gonna catch some giants. Let's go on to Pond 66. Pond 66, first of all, what a horrible, scary name. We're gonna get in and out of here as fast as we can. But as far as conditions go, I am really excited about this pond. One, because the water, as you can see, is crystal clear. Two, yeah, we have some snodgrass, but we actually have some good vegetation. And three, I've been told by a buddy of mine, there are a lot of bass in here, which means we should see quite a lot of, well, it's not a spinning rod. At least I hope it's a lot of gosh and not a lot of, there's one. I'm gonna go with two lures today to take advantage of the windy, almost frontal conditions. The temperature did drop a little bit, but not enough to affect the fish at all. We had a super warm night. So three things, one, polarized sunglasses. I could see one on a bed. So I'm excited for that, the possibility of that, I should say. Two, I'm gonna catch one, as you saw in the intro there, one of the new mock size extensions. This is the Mock Shad 120. And it's a very specific style of swim bait, the jointed uh, shallow water deal because it only really works when the fish are shallow and the water is clear. Hopefully that's the case we have today. And if not, I can go with a red tungsten thunder cricket. I love red in the pre-spawn, especially in coldish clear water. I don't know why it works, but it works. So let's make our first little cast out here. I'm actually gonna keep my sunglasses on just in case I, I see a bed fish. So if I do see a bed, it'll probably be in two inches of water or I won't see them at all. They'll be way out there. No way, no way on the swim bait. Holy cow, holy cow. No stinking way. The first crank I made on that swim bait has resulted in a bass. Let's go, let's go baby. The new mock shad. Oh, and that dude has like a sore, yuck. That is not cash money. That is nasty. Let me show you all this. Look at the nasty gouge it has right in its side. Ew, either way. Success, that may be the quickest success of any Hunter Ponds episode. In case you're wondering, success is just catching a fish. And so either they love this swim bait or this place is loaded. I hope it's the second. Well, I hope it's the first and the second. My second cast with a brand new mock shad. I don't know if they're out yet, but they're coming out soon. So stay tuned to the channel. They'll be on Tackle Warehouse, I believe, which is great for me. So I'll have all my stuff linked down below and we're really trying to show Tackle Warehouse what we can do at Mock. So if you wanna try out the Mock Shad, it is an awesome swim bait for these specific situations. So if you've got shallow, grassy, clear water, I mean, the action on this thing is, is really, really good. Oh, that thing is sexy in the water. That thing looks so good. Well, that was a heck of a way to start. Let's go. Who's calling me? My wife. Hello. What should we do for dinner? <clears throat> I don't know yet. And as she was calling me, I got some snot grass on my lure. Gosh dang it, Hannah. I'm just kidding, I love you. One thing I'm noticing is that this one does sink faster, but it still rises to the top, so it's really a slow swim bait. Two, three, four, five, six, get it about two feet down. It falls about a foot every three seconds. And I mean, I've gotta retrieve it pretty dang slow to keep it down there. Even though it's still got a good action, it's just if I get too, too, too excited with it, I'll bring it all the way to the surface, and especially this time of the year, the fish are probably not gonna chase it all the way up there. Oh, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh my gosh. One was trailing it right there. Where'd you go, is that a bed? It almost looks like there's a bed right here. I see a white spot and I don't see any other white, white spots. And I mean, it's a, it's a different type of white spot. So let me get down here and look. I just don't see any fish on it, but I mean, the fish that followed me came from that area. I'll tell you what, though, I'm gonna call this turtle pond. It's a lot of turtles. Oh, oh, eat it. Eat it, eat it. Oh, dang it. Come on now, come on now. 
Oh man, and now I got gunk all over it. Shoot, I had a bass following me. Come on now. Eat it, eat it. Oh my gosh, there he is. He, he took a swipe at it. Got him, got him, yes sir, yes sir. Holy cow, that was awesome. That was awesome, get in here, yes sir. Super cool, I don't know if this guy was on a bed or not, but he stocked it. Three or four different casts there, got the mock shad. It's funny, both of these fish so far have it to the bottom of the jaw. So it's almost like they're not really trying to eat it, they're just trying to get it out of there, which honestly is kind of spawn-like behavior. Super cool, not a big one. Another nice Texas springtime fish. And I'm gonna stay on this shallow point for a second because I feel like there could be more in this area, cruising around, waiting to spawn. I, I don't think that fish was on a bed, I think it was just getting ready to spawn because I didn't see any kind of bloody tail, any signs of it peeing. But one thing I have noticed about this swim bait so far is that you can actually kind of work it like a fluke. So instead of doing a constant retrieve back to you, which brings it up to the surface, I can actually do like a, paw, a, a, a reel and pause. Reel and pause, kind of a jerk jerk pause, reel and pause. And that kind of gets it swimming and then it glides and then swims and then glides. And that's what got that fish to commit. Yes! Got him. Oh, dang it. Dang it. Had him on the edge of the drop off out there. And I've said this before in videos, if you don't have polarized sunglasses on during the springtime, you are missing out on fish. I only saw that fish because of my sunglasses and that's how I knew to make another cast in there, which resulted in a follow and another cast in there, which resulted in a catch. So if I didn't have sunglasses, even in clear water, cloudy conditions, you have a hard time seeing those fish. And so I use amphibia, they're awesome. I throw them in the water, they float, but I wanna keep them dry for right now. They make an awesome pair of polar eye sunglasses and if you wanna use code, I think it's TRF20, you get 20% off your order. So I will leave the exact glasses I wear, the Lotus frames down in the video description. But enough sponsor talk, let's uh, catch another one. Why don't we? You gotta make at least a few casts with the thunder, thunder chicken. There's one. Yes, sir, got him on the thunder cricket. Now that one was in deeper water. I probably wouldn't have gotten that bite if I was throwing the mock shad. So it's a good thing I had kind of a follow-up lure. I know follow-up lures are usually not reaction baits, but because the thunder cricket falls a lot faster and a lot deeper than the, uh, the mock shad does, I'm kind of using this as my windy, you know, prefrontal, current frontal springtime bait. And you know what, if I slow down with a, a wacky worm or a, a, a weightless soft plastic jerkbait, I'd probably catch twice as many fish, but I'm having fun. And I hope you're having fun. Subscribe. Gosh, there's one. Oh my goodness. Almost on the surface of the water, right up against the side of that culvert. It's almost like when you have structure in a pond without much structure, you can count on the fish to be there. But once again, look at where the mock shad got him. I mean, it's, he's not getting off, but bottom of the jaw, they're just, they're just slapping at it. And I'm wondering, especially with these shallow ones, if they are on beds, because this is definitely bedding behavior. A treble hook got triple gripped on him. Where are my pliers? There we go. Knew I didn't bring my evolution bag for nothing. How does this even happen? How do you get all three hooks? That takes skill, buddy. Well, you know what? Not a big one, but a beautiful fish. Looks got a black spot there, almost like a redfish, and then a black spot on his uh, dorsal fin as well. Super cool. Thanks, buddy. Oh, well. Did not mean to do that, I'm sorry. I tell you what folks, I'm having fun. For the most part, they are in very predictable areas and if we didn't have cloud cover, I could probably see them on beds. Matter of fact, the fish right here is probably on a bed. Oh, nope. He was just hanging out around the concrete and I don't like the way they're eating it, but you know what? I haven't lost one yet, so let's keep going. There's a, what is going on here? There's a, is that a fish? Oh, turtles, oh, they're mating, okay. I'll leave y'all be. It's almost like if you get it around one, he's gonna bite because I haven't had any short strike it and miss it. I've, I think I've lost maybe one fish, but I just gotta land my lure around one and they're probably hungry enough to eat this thing. Now, question is, are there any bigger ones in here or are these fish stunted? I, I bet they're stunted. I don't see a whole lot of bait fish. I doubt anybody in this neighborhood looking around at the houses eats bass. And so uh, I don't think we're gonna catch a big one, but if we do, I'll be mighty surprised. Oh, but what a pretty tree. I just realized I'm standing beneath whatever those white, uh... gosh dang it. Y'all know what they are. It's a pretty tree. Magnolia? Is that Magnolia? I think it is. But I'll tell you something. I see a primo cast coming up here in a second. Oh no. Oh, tried to skip. 
smack the rock. How's my thunder cricket? We okay? Definitely knock some paint off. Now we're gonna skip it. Oh my gosh, what a horrible skip. That, that is kind of far. You gotta give me that. That's a good like 20 yards. But here I go again. Oh yes, there we go. Catch me one, baby. No? Huh? All right, I think I'm this calm water. The thunder chicken is a little too thundery. Gosh, there we go. There we go, absolutely smoked it. My goodness, that felt awesome. God, these fish are so full of energy. Dang it. Well, once again, small fish. Not sure where the big ones are, but they're not here. Gosh, when they eat a slow moving swim bait like that, just knock the crap out of it. That is fun, man. 10 out of 10 recommend. It's getting darker outside. Evening is, <clears throat> evening is upon us. <coughs> Gosh, I started this video about 4.30 p.m. and there ain't a whole lot of daylight left. Three, who's, I don't care who's calling me right now. I got a fish to catch. Just give me one second. As I've been on the phone with Hannah, I've seen two slightly larger, I'm talking like maybe two pound bass that are just kind of chilling right here, but no matter how many casts I make with the mock shad, they don't want to eat it. I'm gonna back away from the water level. There are so many bass in this pond. I just don't see any big ones, it's weird. Gosh, I need a wacky worm so bad. I catch every one of these jokers. But I left my spin piece at the truck. So one thing I'm noticing about this side of the pond is that the bank slopes off a lot quicker. It's like four or five feet right there. So the mock shad is probably not my lure of choice for that deep. So I'm just gonna make one quick pass down this bank here. Actually, I'm gonna pause for a second. I see another culvert of a different variety. But I think to finish out this pond, I'm probably gonna throw the thunder cricket. As you can hear, it's, it's, it's getting windier and the bank has sloped a lot more quickly and it's just not as easy to fish this thing deep as it is shallow. So I'm gonna make some more parallel casts, you know, in that two foot depth range right here. But I think I'll catch a few more a little quicker. Again, we teach efficiency here. I'll be a little more efficient with the vibrating jig. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting windier, it's getting darker. Night is coming. So as much as it pains me to do, I'm gonna hang up the mock shad and we're gonna plug away with this for the rest of the day. Gosh, there we go. Yes, sir, is that bigger? Is that bigger? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Can't tell if it's bigger, I just got him hooked weird. Okay, all right, chunky one, let's go. N ah, knock the slack out of it, and that is the biggest bass of the day right there. Beautiful, almost looks like a different strain. It's like this was part of the of the feed bass that the neighborhood stocked in here, and the other ones might be, you know, native, or uh, maybe that was the Texas strain, and the others were Florida strain, because that fish was not nearly as pretty, but man, they hit so hard in here. I've got a new place to go if I need to take someone who's never caught a bass. Just give them a worm and tell them to cast it out in the middle. This place has got some dang bass in it. Oh, ho, 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 no way. No way, a bed fish, a bed fish, yes. I am untying my thunder cricket. I'm putting on a dang Texas rake. I can't even tell you guys how excited I am right now. Don't even care where the lure goes, just throw it in there. Grab myself a little bed fishing shaky head, my favorite. Oh, let's go, baby. Sun is going down, I can hardly see. Matter of fact, I can't see with these sunglasses on. Is that the bed? Dang it, where'd it go? Shoot! It has gotten so dark outside, I can't even see it. But I'm gonna flip to this white spot and hope that's the bed. Well, shoot, man. I got so excited, I was gonna get my first bed fish of the year. Dang it. Well, there we go, bed fishing tip number one of the season for y'all. Uh, you can't see them when it's evening. Well, I'm not gonna lie, that was a fun episode. I was only gone for about one week, but in that time span, these fish got active, they got shallow, and uh, I'm pumped for what's to come in the next few weeks. Like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna check out Amphibia Sunglasses, awesome sponsor of the channel, and Evolution Outdoors, they are the title sponsor of 100 Ponds going forward. Excited to use their bags, and we've got an awesome bag that I'm helping design here in the future that y'all are gonna love. It might even be better than this one. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button, and if you wanna see the entire 100 Pond series, including the last episode, I will leave it up here in the corner. And you know what, if you wanna see one that applies to like the, the current conditions we're in right now for everybody across the country, kind of that pre-spawn, late winter, I will leave that video up here in this corner. My goal is to teach you guys to catch more bass, and hopefully I did that today. My name's Tyler. We'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.